white liberals. They don't have any culture. Their culture, you want to know what their culture is? In the basement, smelling their mom's underwear. I think, think we might be self-reporting a little bit. I've never heard the mom underwear sniffing liberal smear. I've heard a lot of smears against liberals. I've made a lot of smears against liberals. That one might be coming from the heart. Check out this Adam Calhoun video. Trust me, it's bad. Sure. Why not? Hello, Adam Calhoun. <clears throat> How are we doing today? You look happy? I feel pretty happy. Uh, we, uh, you know, we, we, we're both happy. How you doing? What do we got? White people do have culture. Ooh, this is going to be a very defensive video, isn't it? <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Just hit me up. We've got three minutes and 21 seconds to, uh, to, to address racial grievances. Let's go. What's up, suckers? I've been gone for a little bit, but also YouTube has been unsubscribing you guys like crazy. So just make sure you subscribe, hit the bell and all that so you can see my videos. I don't think that's how that works. Bit of a self-report there. Wait, actually, hold on. Um, let me see if I can find his social blade. Has he actually been losing subs? Sometimes people just say that. Adam Calhoun. Uh, no, no, no. His only sub uh, his only sub movement has been uh, increased, though apparently he recently deleted a ton of videos. Whew. Wonder what that? Whoa, a lot of videos, huh? Well, YouTube has been removing spam subs recently. Oh yeah, they do that from time to time to get rid of spam accounts. That's not unsubbing regular people. Uh, what? Whatever. I don't care. I don't care. I'm back. Now, before I start this video, I just want to say there's a lot of these young kids wearing Carhartt shit and not doing any Carhartt shit. This shit's not a fashion statement. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you're assholes. But now nah, we're gonna. What? What, what is, what is this hat meant to represent? It's a brand logo? What, what is, what is the hat shit? What is, what is the shit of the hat? It's mechanic slash journeyman gear. So they're like not fixing enough cars? Okay. Sorry, I'm too much of an anime watcher to... Alright. Get into the video. This is a good one. You're gonna want to watch this. Okay, uh -huh. so I keep hearing this thing said by mostly racist people saying white people don't have any culture. Have you ever heard of, I don't know, Europe without... <laughs> Europe. <laughs> okay. So... To be charitable uh, here, so that we are fully aware of these talking points, okay? Any statement saying that any member of any racial group can't produce culturally or artistically worthwhile things is obviously incorrect because it's an essentialist perspective. When people talk about white people having no culture here in America, there are normally a couple of adjacent criticisms that are being sort of blended together, which are what they actually mean. It's just funny to say white people have no culture. One of them is that the sort of upper middle class suburban conspicuous consumerism is something that is culturally attached to affluent white people and is also very culturally void. The idea of shopping malls, 20 minute drives to get to your local strip mall, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, just, uh, just like living in a house that's one of five templates identical to all the other houses within like a four mile radius, you know, stuff like that, a, bu a bunch of other things too, depending on how mean you want to be, you know, um, the only culture some of these people have is their ability to consume products that corporations design specifically for them and their uh, you know, um, excess income. So that's one thing. The second thing is the belief that generally speaking in most cultures, uh, cultural contributions come disproportionately from oppressed groups. Now, this isn't always the case, but there's definitely a positive trend here in America at the very least. Here in America, a disproportionate amount of cultural contributions have been made by Queer people, uh, gay, lesbian, what have you, they tend to be overrepresented in artists, in filmmakers, in a bunch of stuff like that. God knows they're overrepresented in theater, you know. Uh, black people, um, you know, uh, it was pretty common back during the turn of the 20th century. 
uh, that white people would go slumming, that was the term for it, to go see what was up in Harlem, uh, what local black musicians and artists were doing. And it was often felt that their artistic contributions, while, you know, not white and therefore bad, were still worth looking at. And of course, you know, they became almost ubiquitously celebrated after a long enough period of time. Uh, so, you know, you have that. Not to mention black people have contributed a, let's say, widely disproportionate amount of work to American musical culture. Like, one of the biggest outputs of American culture worldwide, like, is rock and roll, you know? And now it's hip-hop. And in both cases, those are, and it was jazz beforehand, you know, in, in all cases, yeah, black people just putting in a lot of work, gotta say. Oh, and Jewish people. Jewish people, as we learned before on stream, had a disproportionate influence in a number of mediums, not just because uh, entertainment was considered a poor man's job, and they were often really poor, but also because uh, when Edison invented technology adjacent to film production, people wanted to use it, and Edison said no. And some of the people who Edison said no to were Jews. And because Edison didn't like Jews, he was like, okay, you guys are getting lawsuited. You guys are getting zooted and lawsuited, okay? So the Jews literally fled to the West Coast because it was much more difficult to sue somebody back in those days when they were 3,000 miles away from you. And a lot of them ended up settling in and contributing to what would later be Hollywood. So in many respects, there is an adjacency between being oppressed and producing culture. So, so does everyone understand? These are the reasons why people say white people have no culture. It's not explicitly true. Obviously, white people are capable of producing culture. But there are underlying socioeconomic currents that, uh, that, that inform that simplified perspective. There we go. White people, this whole shit, it doesn't work. You know, like freedom and shit. Okay, I'm sure that the uh, the 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 black men who were enslaved in the 19th century would uh, would would feel very good about the idea that white people were the arbiter of freedom, freedom and shit. The funny thing is, when he says that, doesn't he sound like an alt writer stereotype of a black guy? You know, he's like, "We got freedom and shit." You know, it's, it's, uh, it just reminds me. I see a lot of racist comics as a product of the circles that I have to observe to know their arguments. <laughs> it's like you're trying to make it sound like we're not worth anything. Okay, how about... By the way, this is what people talk about when they say white fragility. Making a video where you're feigning anger at this one, like, saying that you heard without contributing any meaningful analysis, but just going like, well, you think, well, you, so you're saying, like, we're not even people? Like, yeah, this is what people talk about, you know? All the white people oh. just stay home from work. Stop paying taxes. What's what? that have to do with culture? That's our, we work. We build shit. I'm Okay, so now we're getting into white supremacy here. The idea that white culture is building and working uh, is, is done to the explicit uh, counter... Like, the, the immediate following statement is that uh, non-white people do not work and do not build shit. Um, which, this is, of course, sort of a, a, a racist... Um, I, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm trying too hard to explain this. Let's just, let's just let him go. I'm not saying... Other races don't work. Oh. I'm just saying, hey, white people, stay at home, kick your feet up, collect government cheese, do all that bullshit, and let's just see what happens. Wait, so wait, if you're not saying that building... Wait, so first of all, he did say it because he said that building stuff and working is white people culture, but if we're not even talking about cultural contributions and are only talking about work, then what does this have to do with anything? Hey, America would collapse if all black or Hispanic people just stopped working. You realize that, right? Like, black people are, like, fucking 14% of the population or something. Like, if, if black people just stop working, like, if, if tens of millions of people of any skin color stopped working, the country would collapse. Yeah, is he calling for, like, a racist general strike? Yeah? Um, I don't know what point this is. I keep saying this, and I love saying it, that um, any argument in favor of the intellectual superiority of white people can be effortlessly refuted by the nature of the men who make it. Uh, because the kinds of people who make arguments like this are so fucking dumb, man. Uh, you think white people produce no culture? Well, like, what, what if, like, 50% of the population of the country didn't do work? I don't know, man. I, 
it would be bad. It, it would not be good. So I think to myself, maybe you're not talking about white people because there's white people all over the world, even in Africa. So maybe you're talking about white Americans. I only hear this talked about in reference to America, by the way. When like people say white people don't have culture, this is always Americans talking about America. I've never heard Europeans say this once, you know? Europeans, well, keep in mind there are like 30 countries in Europe, but they have a very different relationship historically, domestically, foreign, you know, culture-wise, race stuff. It, it's, a, it's another country, you know? It's a whole different thing. Um, very different set of circumstances. Not to say we don't have, not to say they don't have racism, but, you know, they, it, it, different kinds of racism. So let's just say white Americans don't have any culture. Here we go. What's up? Who said white boys don't have culture? Calhoun 24, make America have a big old balls. White people don't have culture. You ever heard of unseasoned meatloaf, Mountain Dew, Bear Pong, Flippy Cup, drag strip races, punching holes in drywall, NASCAR? Praise Dale, amen. Fucking monster trucks, WWF, that shit's real. You can't tell me no different. Leonard Skinner, David Allen Coe, if that ain't country, I'll kiss your ass. Okay, that's... And it's not just about... Actually, wait. There are a couple of legitimate arguments that he just made there. Because I would actually argue that um, one of the most culturally distinct groups of people in America are those, like, NASCAR-loving, lower-middle-class white people uh, with a strong connection to things like country music, you know, the aesthetic of or actual implementation of really hard, like, manual work. Like, redneck culture sounds derogatory, but I don't think there's anything wrong with being a redneck or being a hillbilly or whatever. I think a lot of them tend to be politically not on my side, and I don't like that, but in terms of, like, them generally, yeah, there's definitely cultural distinction there. The thing that I find cringe, though, is when rich people who I'm gonna guess Adam Calhoun is, pretend to be in the latter group. You guys know those types who are like, we're real rednecks, and they have like four trucks in their like McMansion or something? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. Country music was like directly lifted from a ton of African-American sources. So, you know, not even to speak of that, but you know, it is actual cultural appropriation. There's an amazing... A uh, Patreon-only episode on this from the Well, There's Your Problem podcast, where they talk about country music's origin and how country music, yay back in the day, uh, tended to be anti-authoritarian, culturally distinct, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, like solidarity with the working class. They weren't all like leftists or whatever, but you know, there was definitely like a blue dog Democrat attitude towards old country. But ever since 9-11, it's like, yeah, I love my pickup truck and I love the police, love my low tax bill, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> Like that's it's 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 all like an aesthetic. Yeah, it's 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 all like an a it's it's it, like look. If I just Google like country music today, I feel like a lot of people who produce country music these days are like multimillionaires. Who like they they wear denim and the cowboy hat or whatever, but like a lot of people who produce country music these days. In terms of their wealth and their relationship to the means of production, they are literally like leagues above, like a lot of hip hop artists who are who, who like get legitimately get their start. That's the difference, right? A lot of hip hop artists legitimately get their start from nothing, uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of country music singers these days, you know, um, they just feel like they're made out of a factory. I understand I'm speaking from a little bit of a perspective of ignorance here, but I guess what I'm getting at is that I feel like Adam Calhoun probably makes enough money that uh, cultural ties he might have to redneck dumb might be a little bit disingenuous at this point. No way you could show more in a short clip, but even everything you say is in this Bo song. Oh yeah, uh, Bo Burnham's country song. Yeah. And he they figured out the words and the phrases they can use to pander to their audience and they list the same words and phrases off sort of mad lib style in every song raking in millions of dollars from actual I'll get copyrighted if I go too far with that one but yeah that's it's, it's a good bit yeah
All right, anyway, let's continue here. The culture thing, it's, it's okay for other races to be openly racist against white people, and it's okay. There's no repercussions, there's no anything. It's acceptable. It's actually, like pushed like it's okay say it say it and that doesn't bother me i'm i'm okay with that like that's fine like really really it's fine with you you're you're demonstrating your tremendous lack of concern with this video uh and your feigned outrage um maybe he's saying that he's lying when he pretends to care about it which i think would be closer to honesty than a lot of other interpretations of this statement um here well, i got tough skin we could take that but don't get mad uh -huh. when a white kid is like videoing himself or making a TikTok or doing something and he's rapping along with a song and, and the song says an N word in it and the r kid raps it and you get so mad. And you know who gets so mad? Who is he talking to here? All black people? I thought he was talking to the kinds of people who would say white people have no culture, but this is a completely other issue. Now it just seems like he's addressing the black race, you know? Like, well, I don't. You know, if you're going to say this thing about white people, then you, then you got to let us say it. You got to let, let us say the word. Look, I'm on record on this shit, man. If a white kid is rapping along and they say the N-word, I don't care. I just don't, okay? Uh, obviously, there are ways in which they could do that, which would be worse than others. But, like, generally, I don't care. I just, I don't. Whatever. The, uh, uh, in the great battle for civil rights, this feels like an issue which is not even tangential. Uh, but, um... It, it is in another field altogether. Another zip code, even. I just don't care. But, like, the way he's phrasing this just makes it seem like he's talking to all black people. But a lot of the people who say white people have no culture are white people. For him to reframe this as he is kind of suggests that he believes this is some sort of race war thing. Like, this is some kind of direct beef between white and black people. This, the saying, white people have no culture, is kind of a ubiquitous criticism that comes out for a lot of reasons from a lot of different people. So he's, he's treating it like the white race is under attack from black people saying it, and the only way to keep it fair would be if he could say the N-word. Oh, a reminder. The only thing less important than a white kid saying the N-word as he does a rap is caring that people get mad. The, the only thing more pathetic than that is, like, making it a fucking civil rights issue, you know? The white race will not be free until... Dead white liberals. They don't have any culture. Their culture, you want to know what their culture is? In the basement, smelling their mom's underwear, on the iPhone. I think, think we might be self-reporting a little bit. I've never heard the mom underwear sniffing liberal smear. I've heard a lot of smears against liberals. I've made a lot of smears against liberals. Not heard that one. Uh, that one might be coming from the heart. That a white guy invented talking shit that would never say anything to your face. That's white liberal culture. Joe Biden's president, 80 million votes. What? What? Wait, what? Underwear on the iPhone that a white guy invented talking shit. They would never say anything to your face. That's the iPhone that a white guy invented. I don't think one person invented the iPhone. Wait, what? What the fuck is he talking about? So a lot of this is just incoherent stupidity. But keep in mind, this guy is definitely a white supremacist. We've covered other videos of his. It's not subtle. Um, he keeps indicating that he thinks people of other races should be grateful that white people make things. Yeah, the people who made your iPhone were probably underpaid Asian workers. Uh, that would be that would be my guess. Um, that would be my that would be my my yeah my my guess at the at the hand. Probably like sweatshop workers in China. That's that's my guess at the hand. But he does seem to keep insisting that people who aren't white should be grateful to white people. Uh, for um, for making some things, which has always been a bit weird to me. Like, why would you attribute that to an entire race? I actually think it would make more sense to attribute it to a country. Like, 
America is responsible for the creation of stuff within it. I don't believe that either because I'm not a nationalist bootlicker, but at least then you can make arguments that there are resources and uh, incentive structures within a country that were deliberately produced that led then to the invention of stuff, you know? In that case, you know, at least there's a relationship, but there is absolutely nothing about Steve Jobs that makes the things that he do does a white thing. It's just not a it's not a not an inherent tie there. That's white liberal culture. Joe Biden's president, 80 million votes, suck my ass. And I don't care if Donald Trump uh -huh. is ever president again. I don't give a shit about that. I went all over the place just at the end right here. This started about white culture. Give me a fucking break. How did he manage to lose the plot in a three minute video that's been edited? That is incredible. We've conquered, we've invented, and I'll just say it. Oh, oh, hold on, wait. We, we keep doing the mask off, mask on, mask off. Let's let's go again. Keep the cycle going, you know. Give me a fucking break. We've conquered. We've invented. And I'll just say it. Fuck it. Without us crazy-ass white people, the world would probably be a less fun place. I'm not ashamed of the... Okay, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. No, that's fine. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Yeah, okay. There are like billions of white people. Okay, yeah, sure. Keep them. Uh, that's fine. Uh, weird thing to say, but I expected something a little bit more racist. Um, also, I like the, you know, like, we built shit, we conquered shit. Conquest... Conquest is, uh, value neutral, trending on value negative, for the most part. You can do good conquests, you know? I'd say there probably is a legitimate argument to be made for American occupation in Japan after the end of World War II. Uh... But a lot of conquest stuff is bad, actually. Uh, it's often kind of, kind of bad, you know? Uh, we did some bad stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He literally just admitted white culture is stealing stuff by saying conquest. Yeah, that's a interesting choice of words, you know? Um... It is always interesting to me, it has always been interesting to me, how the white supremacist mantra is to simultaneously denounce other races for interpersonal violence, but to celebrate the white race's capacity for systemic violence. You know what I mean? Like, a white supremacist will eulogize white society for its effectiveness in conquest, in murder, uh, in genocide, but will then condemn individual black people because they perceive them to be more violent, which uh, it's almost as though fascists and white supremacists are wrong and make incoherent arguments that will suit them, uh, you know, however applied. It's almost as though there's a double standard. Whites are pretty good at killing whites too little. Oh, guys. If you want to rack up body counts in Europe for all the all the people killed by the glorious white antiquity, it's like 98% other white people. The the concept of whiteness wasn't around back then. Britons thought of themselves as Britons and Franks thought of themselves as Franks. They would kill each other. And and by the way, there were some weird things being said back then that were like an approximation of modern racial pseudoscience, you know. They the, people people in the Germanic territories and people in France would sometimes talk about each other like they were different species. But now white supremacists say that like they're basically the same. Of course, in reality, all humans are basically the same because we are literally the same species. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, collectivized W, individual L's, 100%. I am not the same as British people. Well, you know, it's uh, the difficulties of, of, of genealogical tracing. Have you ever done a 23 in me, Shu? I never have. I actually wonder. Why are you talking so slowly today, Kek V? Because uh, my, I, my low IQ, what do you want from me? Jesus Christ. <laughs> These lyrics are so bad. Oh my God. Not because of their slurs. The slurs are the, are the least bad part of this. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. How, what's, the, what's the tempo here, man? Hillbilly. Faggot. 
N-word. White trash. Fuck you, N-word. What the fuck you rapping for, cracker ass cracker? <laughs> Caught your rebel fly with your camo hat backwards. As I'm, I'm guessing because the title is racism, it's like how racism is bad no matter how does it. Oh, no, wait, hold on. Oh, wait, yeah. Oh, my God. It's, um, guys, what's the one rap that I kind of like, even though people say that I shouldn't like it? What's the one? Um, it's the one, it's the one where the black guy raps for the white and black part. I'm not racist. I'm not racist. Apparently people don't like that artist or whatever, but I thought that song was nice. It was interesting, at least. Maybe I'm just dumb. I don't know. Um, which was, in terms of messaging, a superior point to this one. So look, it's like the ultimate, like, enlightened centrism. So at the beginning, it's like, you cracker-ass cracker. But then at the end here, it's the N-word. So, so here it's like people being mean to hillbillies, and here it's like the language that reinforces two centuries of the suppression of black people, you know? And, and here is just the language of institutional white supremacy. Does someone else rap the N-word part, Lamau? Well, the, the, the black uh, rapper in the song, you mean in this one? No, Adam Calhoun loves saying the N-word. Um, but in the song I'm referring to, the I'm Not Racist one, the black rapper uh raps both parts but the white guy in the in the song lip syncs to the rap in both cases so it's the same guy singing but it's two people having a convo acted out between two actors um i liked it i don't know here no i can't play it i i would to demonstrate the point but um but i'll get i'll get copyrighted like for sure who's he meant to represent Stan Law's baby cousin Tracy got a brother and his girlfriend's black. At least the at least the singing is like high quality. Like at least he can fucking sing. I've heard Adam Calhoun singing. Color of my skin, nor will I teach my kids to be ashamed of their color of skin or to look at other people and judge them by the color of their skin. We should judge people by the content of their character. Damn. MLK. MLK reborn. I feel like I feel like the the big the big argument. I've heard this so much, man. It's like the, um, oh, you don't, you don't want me to be racist? Maybe we should all stop being racist against rednecks. You know, it, it's a pretty common one. The funny thing, though, is that, like, rednecks do face real-life systemic oppression for being poor. They don't for being white. Like, maybe very marginal, like, incredibly marginal interpersonal. It's classism that gets them. But... They're convinced to vote, very often, in favor of policies that hurt them for a variety of reasons. There are POC rednecks, it's not a white culture. I would say that redneck as a cultural group is pretty white-coded, you know? It's, it's, like, it's like how scene is pretty white-coded, even though there were black scene girls. <laughs> oh yeah, she went ahead. Redneck definitely used to have more of like a class solidarity underpinning. There actually was a black scene girl in my high school. Just cut the just cut the segment. 